What can a Jeep Gladiator teach us about shredding with confidence? Tune in, I'll show you exactly how. In this episode, I'm going to take one spiritual download and immediately magnify your mountain biking by 1,001%. And the reason why I'm the triple crown winner, the one wife, same wife, same kids, same paid off minivan guy who gets on the internet and yells at you about bike technique. The reason why I've been chosen as the number one Sandy guy to help you with your mountain biking is because, well, I've been chosen. Being the chosen one is a tough decision to have to accept, but that's the hero's journey, isn't it? So I know why you're on this channel. It's because you've tried to send it and you failed. And because of this failure, your own children are questioning if they're really yours. They're at my house getting tutored right now in math and physics. And you want to know what the secrets are. It's the same thing that helped these writers here on the screen. I'm going to show you their comments and their videos and stuff. It's exactly, exactly what they're doing to get Sendy, to get absolutely Sendy in this winter season right before Christmas. You want to be the, the rider who's like reaching across saying, hey, I actually want to you know, pass me the rolls without a broken collarbone. Let's go. Pay attention to the end of this video. I'm going to show you with one tip how you can ride downhill, ride uphill, and just basically be more connected with the bike. What you're watching is the front suspension. I want you to take a look at the at the body of the truck and then watch how the wheels reach down, the right and the left wheels reach down and they articulate up and down. Now what's happening here is the Jeep is allowing the the front axle, which is a solid front axle, to move up and down. And what this does is it allows the, the frame of the Jeep to stay relatively still while the wheels track up and down. This is what you want to do on a mountain bike trail. It's not that complicated. And so in order to do this, what I found is a lot of riders, what they get stuck on is they think about their body positions and they actually lock their body positions and they ride like an action figure. Imagine an action, <laughs> I gotta get an action figure. In other words, where the front and the back wheel goes, all these points are kind of attached to each other and then you become reactive to the trail. When you're reactive to the trail, the problem is, is that you end up going wherever the trail tells you to go and that's not even a smooth path. In my last video, I talked about how important it is to lead with a torso path. You should watch that video right now, pay attention all the way through, it'll really break it down. In this video though, we're gonna keep it really simple. What you need to do is you need to decouple the up and down movement from your torso and the wheels. So if you look at this side by side right here, this is exactly what we wanna do. We wanna be just like a Jeep Gladiator with the sway bar disconnected. Now, if I were to connect the sway bar, it would not let the wheels move up and down. And if there was a bump on the left side or the right side, then what would happen is the Jeep's body would follow wherever the wheels would go. And my kids in the back seat would be like, dad, we're gonna tip over, this is uncomfortable. It's not fun. <laughs> okay, so why this is so important, and the reason why you're stuck as an intermediate mountain biker is, is literally because you have your sway bar connected. In other words, if the trail, I'm saying this again, if the trail goes down you're, you're, and you're riding over something, when the front wheel clears that thing, then your whole body and your whole bike just tips forward. And then when you land, you're having to brace and catch yourself, which is why you get tired. It leads to arm pump. It leads to a whole host of other problems. Yeah, so it's cold out here. <laughs> And so again, this is a very simple concept, but what you wanna do is disconnect the sway bar. In other words, let the bike move independently of the body. A really good parking lot drill or a, you know, going off of a curb drill to try is to get into what it's called a low ready position and ride your bike off of a curb, but make sure that your torso has an absolute stable path. In other words, your torso doesn't move, but what I want you to do is let the bike move down and keep your body and your head as still as possible. This drill allows us to practice disconnecting our body's sway bar and allows the front wheel and the body and the back wheel to move all independently of each other. Now, another, another drill that is really good is actually just to go to a pump track. It's literally just to go to a pump track. If you go to a pump track, you will be tested and the, the fact of the matter is that if you're slow at the pump track or if you feel very tired or you can't accelerate at a pump track, then it's going to kind of show you and give you feedback on how you're just locking up. 
Does that make sense? Listen, if this resonates with you, this whole concept of shredding with confidence and taking control of the controllables out on the trail, if this is you, you're in the right place. And look, if you wanna be one of the 10,000 riders that we impact to help with this, go ahead and feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. I intend to be the number one resource for intermediate mountain bikers looking to break through that skill plateau and get to the next level. Go ahead and like and subscribe if this is you. All right, that's it for today's video. Again, a reminder, if you want a deeper breakdown, watch the last video I did on demystifying downhill. Click the link right here, check it out. It goes all the way into three levels of what to do and why. I'll see you on the next episode, thanks.